Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Straight Pixels podcast, where the audience has 12 hours to get all of us to exactly 100 Twitter followers, or else, or else Azario will mysteriously disappear forever. Wait, we actually have a Twitter follower t- account? Shit, yeah. shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Technically. I am your host. I am Noisy Pixel staff writer Colin Buchanan, and I am joined as usual by my fellow staff writer Nathan Mejia and our senior editor Jacob Cavanaugh. How are you guys doing this week? Um, okay, I am functional. <laughs> All of my brain cells have been consumed by the um, current topic, <laughs> which we will be talking about later. Yeah, you've been you've been kind of, uh, as Bailey would say, pogging nonstop. <laughs> Something along those lines. Nate, how about you? Uh, I, I've been going good. I, I've had to make some uh, changes because of medical stuff. Uh, so I have been more tired than, than normal because of it. But, you know, it's it's good. Better than me staying up till 5 o'clock in the morning, waking up at 8, uh, being awake all day, and then doing the, it over and over again and while, while drinking over five liters of caffeine, a.k.a. Dr. Pepper and Mountain Dew. My goodness. Yeah, uh, I spent the last two weeks uh, largely in airports because mm. I had trips that just happened to line up in consecutive weeks. Uh, and one of them... Uh, I, I did mention this previously, but uh, last week was the worst one because I had a late night flight that was delayed by three hours and I was afraid that I was going to get stuck in New Jersey for an extra night uh, <laughs> with, with nowhere to go. So at least I'm home now. I actually just got home uh, at about 8.30 this morning <laughs> after a 6 a.m. flight out of South Carolina, which is where I recently was. Oh, I've been to the South Carolina airport. It's not bad. Uh, Greenville was the specific one. It's the cutest, tiniest little airport I've ever been in. It it has it has fourteen gates. <laughs> it has two terminals. One of them has nine. The other one has four. Honestly, oh, I would right. rather that than the the big ass one. Over so at, small. At Denver International with our demonic blue horse. I grew up with Philly International, which always looks like it's in the middle of a disaster movie. Mm. That's funny. Like people it's are fleeing way, some kind of some kind of uh, cataclysmic event. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I actually know what you're talking about. I also been in the Philadelphia airport. I used to take a lot of uh, plane trips uh, for business. You've also seen my airport, though. Now uh, in, in Milwaukee, which is adorable and perfectly sized, and I love it. Yes, I actually uh, even had lunch in the restaurant by one of the gates. It was not bad, although they were about to close, even though it was only like noon or something. And I was very confused. By Short all. staffing, man. Closing it's authority. affecting everybody. Yeah. All right. So as I was sitting uh, in that airport in Newark, New Jersey last week, uh, something crazy started happening. uh, That was an escalation of something that has been slowly unfolding over the past several weeks and just started a brand new cycle uh, earlier today. No, yesterday, yesterday, Uh, the day before yesterday, technically true. Well, at at time recording. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. technically it was before even that, but it was that starting anyway. Okay, so uh, Jacob, this is this is your time to shine. So please tell us about hidden bats. All right, so hidden bats is a lead up our ARG well, alternate reality game for the old seven of you who don't know, which is probably. Seven's too high. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is an ARG run by Spike Chomsoft in the lead up to either Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. This is sort of a follow up to the when the first either Somnium Files came out. Uh, there was its own ARG in, in Elite. There was it had its own ARG. So we had videos starring one of the in-universe characters named Tessa or Iris or Aset. She has like three names. Um, and the weekly mocap to videos where the, the CGI character would talk about random stuff and there would be a rant, there would be 
occasionally tidbits towards like a conspiracy or something in the background. Very, very Lonely Girl 15. <laughs> it was um quite, it was quite positively received. Some people found it a bit um, too much because it seemed to spoil. It did spoil a few things when one of the videos was her literally playing the game. <laughs> and... Spoiler, it's a video game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I uh, know that um that uh, the inf the um what was played was like further into one of the routes, and some people didn't like that. But anyway, it was well received. But the pro main problem with the ARG was the fact that one part of the game sort of hinged upon whether or not you'd experienced it. One pit would be um. One of the much weaker parts of the game is not so weak if you'd been keeping up with the ARG. If you hadn't, you were like, well, what the f <laughs> it was just a weird story route that didn't go anywhere. Okay. Up to um, the initial release of, or uh, the initial announcement of the Nirvana Initiative, there was a weird. Um, series of puzzles that people could solve and they would they fit that that series of puzzles um culminated in the actually first reveal trailer and then um several weeks ago now there was this teasing of oh goodness there's actually been a ton of build-up but it's only really happened in the last couple of weeks with a website called the Sonaiku Foundation. This website, this is this is this this is a hidden bats. The new ARG in which so the Sonaiku Foundation is a website that is that is uh, dedicated to resolving missing persons cases as quickly as possible. So they aren't um it's an organization seemingly made out of um former law enforcement officers. And there's, there's a little note that it's a work of fiction in the About Us, just so you don't think it's an actually real organization. But um, within the About page, within the, uh, actually within the news articles, there were a couple of basic things about like the, the president being appointed to the task force establishment, a basic... First missing person A was found and rescued. Um, eventually, on the uh, actually it was the sixth of May, in which we had the uh, disappearance of Aine Ichirai and Minato Sotobara, which were characters given out with a um with a portrait. These characters are weren't really important to anyone not in the know until Spike Chunsoft went. Here are press releases. This is a thing. Now, within, within the Sonaku Foundation page is a patrons button. You click that, you go to a fancy hidden website called Hidden Bats, and you have a bunch of staticky TVs. About, one of the TVs has about, we've got, this is a case, a plan, experiment, and it's got the essentially rules. Placed in each room are a, a smartphone, which is only active for 21 minutes, once every two days, and a box with a nine digit lock. Each character per day gets to use this phone to use Twitter and try and solve the puzzle. This puzzle is has to be solved by outside people. So to solve, there are these puzzles are posted on uh, Twitter by in-character accounts for the um the captive the captives. So during the first week, we had the um the high school student and the college graduate, and each day one of them would post their puzzle. People would try and solve this puzzle. The puzzles are basic ciphers. There is a video called the bats for well, bats four eight nine. It's about it's just under four minutes long, and it's 
basically just a really it, it, the puzzles are really basic ciphers. The funky there are funky animals that translate to different letters, different symbols. It was it, it's a whole lot of nonsense unless you went and cataloged literally everything, which people have already done because there's a Discord server that already did all that. You can find all of this information already cataloged. Um, God, see, I'm trying to set this up like a story, but also give all the details. It's okay because it's, it's not unplayable. it's not done yet. We don't have like a, a full summary. We just have a this is what happened in the first cycle, so this is right. very, how we expect this to go. Right. So in the first cycle, it was just your interchangeably there were interchangeable puzzle solves, puzzle puzzles. So I name would post, ask for assistance. People would put. People would solve the uh, puzzle, plug the answer into the answer TV on the Hidden Bat site. There would be a, um, th there is a well done, please reply to the character with the following nine digits. And occasionally there'd be a little like preachy little uh, comment, assumedly from this organization, Hidden Bats, like, um, one of them was like, are you conscious? Do your neighbors have free will? How can you be sure that kind people are simply not NPCs? Blah, 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 blah. Until next time. Now, this was a fun event because everyone was just like, haha, look at these scrunkers who've been kidnapped and we're solving puzzles for them. Aren't these fun characters that we all immediately gravitate to and latch onto and just start making, turning very minuscule things that they say into giant memes because there's nothing else to catch onto. But this is the Zero Escape guy. So... <laughs> this is indeed the Zero Escape guy. So as our um, main, as the main uh, solving server, uh, we're now solving the puzzles ludicrously quickly. Um... We're talking, they, the first one was solved in about 40 seconds because they cataloged the entire Bats 489 video before any of the puzzles dropped. And then, it because it's the same cipher, the, the puzzle times decreased. And then, on, I believe, day five, uh, someone went, okay, well, Bernardo's last puzzle answer was escape. I'm going to put game in the answer sheet and just see what happens. You know, zero escape. They're escape games, right? Game was the answer. So we successfully, the fans successfully got the answer before the puzzle even dropped at that time. Thus leading to everyone being focused on the, lol, what kind of time are we going to get now? We beat the puzzle before it even dropped completely unawares that the next day would reveal where things got spicy. Hidden Bats has apparently got, act apparently knew about this, these are the characters' old Twitters. So it was revealed in the next day that one of these characters who'd been nice and jovial for all of his posts, he'd been like, he, may, he, had, he had only the most realistic reactions to getting kidnapped. Like, I straight up don't know how I got here. Oh, you smart people out there, could you solve it for me? I'm just going to wait for you. We find his old Twitter account. He's a crazy stalker and might have murdered someone accidentally. This was then followed up. The burner, the burner answer... At the burner Twitter account, the alt Twitter account was made up of the code words. So one could easily use these code words from the um, answer code words from the other character. And lo and behold, there's our second burner account revealing that our two beloved scrimblers were a stalker and a murderer and a kleptomaniac and also a murderer. Followed by the fact that we now had to um, 
vote on Twitter via likes and retweets to save one of them. But, but, but. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna. No. Do you want me to? Because I've, I've, like. I've had a, I've had opinions on this all week. So <laughs> let's uh, hear it. <laughs> the the nature of the game, uh, and this was explicitly spelled out in the in the tweet that linked the two tweets that were that were being used as vote counters. Uh, and said, whichever one has fewer votes will will disappear. Uh, but both of them will be released if the votes are tied. Uh, I I get it. I get that this is like playing mind games with people, um, especially since for about 90% of the following 24 hours, the two tweets were perfectly tied. Almost every time I looked at them, they were either perfectly tied or they were one off from each other. Um, from a design perspective, this is a game that disincentivizes participation. Uh, because you touching the thing can only make it worse. Um, so I didn't like that aspect of it. And then, uh, in the end, at the, at the very end of the 24 hours after the discord server was freaking the fuck out because they weren't completely perfectly tied and people were scrambling and fucking it up worse. I believe they were separated by a total of nine votes, if I remember correctly. Uh, by the end? Yeah. By the end, it was four votes difference. Um, and then, uh, at, at like the exact moment that they cut it off, the, the hidden bats, Twitter account literally put a screenshot of each of the tweets just to be yeah. people were like, I wonder like, will there be a margin of error? Because obviously this is something that one person could decide to fuck up for everybody in the end. Uh, and it made it immediately clear. Nope. N nope. There was, it, they were not tied. They were not tied. Um, and, and the consequences are, are going to be exactly what we said they were going to be. Um, so in the end, uh, Aine was saved and rescued and is still tweeting, uh, and Binato disappeared. Yep. There were, um, complaints because everyone instantly went, we want to tie it. Well, this is everyone in Verticomus, like... There was a hashtag established very immediately, like a tie hashtag the vote. Hashtag tie the vote, T-A-I, the vote. Because, you know, this is either Somnium Files somehow. And, well, um, it didn't go, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> Quite a few people got salty about the outcome not being like, um, you know, it being off to the one side. But, there were also, of course, a bunch of people who did not want, were not voting for both of them to be tied because they had an obvious bias, and that's sort of the point. It is, it was kind of annoying, but also, hi, this is, the, the, the Hidden Bats website is literally inside the We Are Rescuing Missing Persons website and definitely not responsible for abducting them in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it also, like, and this kind of baffles me, that there were indeed people that did not immediately get this. The fact that the option was presented to tie the vote means that that is what the game designers, like, were trying to get to happen, or at least yeah. trying to put pressure on us to do. Uh, uh, and... We, we've now started a second cycle of this that we don't know how it's going to go, but there are two more, two more characters that have been vanished. But as of yet, we're still in like the figuring out who these people are uh, phase of this cycle. And there's not been a, hey, here's our, here's our new Saw style game to determine, you know, who lives and who dies here. Um, I do think it is interesting because I think... I think the, uh, the the fact that that is an option that was presented and then actually is then denied 
presented such a wave of whoa despair yeah uh, such a wave of essentially despair and then undercut by the fact that like which is minimized by the fact that like um uh, it was po it was um uh, Uchikoshi and Okada so the scenario writer and the director of the game um did make some posts to assail fears like of like um either intentional tampering or the fact that it's just I think the idea was to provide the option of tying them mm -hmm. as a false hope because it's a corrupt it's a, it's a corrupt menacing evil organization of course, and then Uchikoshi brought up the fact that the there's an ambiguity around disappeared. Yeah, and I I pointed that out too. Um, was because we also so if I can like step back and pull back the curtain on this for a moment. So from a uh, from the perspective of the game designers, first of all, the thing that's the thing that sticks out about this entire thing to me is. In terms of the tone, this is much closer to Zero Escape than it is to Somnium Files because Somnium Files has like like for a very solid portion of it has a much lighter tone than anything that has happened in this ARG so far. It's all been very like it starts out okay and then it just kind of gets crazier and and darker and edgier. Um, but second of all. Uh, Uchikoshi is a man that has to work on a very limited budget for these games. Um, so I cannot imagine that the team would have invested because the game comes out next month. I can't imagine that the team would have finished content that would have depended on the results of this ARG to go one way or the other. So I'm trying to detach and be like, well, this is just like, this is just promotion. Like it's, it's a cool thing that they're doing, but I don't think that this is going to have any material consequences once the thing is over. Yes. There's, there's, an, um, there's going to be something that it's referenced. Um, we already know this much due to the fact that um within the uh uh the the flight of free video that was on a qr code within the famitsu within within a famitsu piece as well as then in the following trailer uh linked to a flight of free that meant a video a weird video that mentions hidden bats as well as the fact that the last character trailer and this trailer have mentioned the bats 490 whereas this is bats 489 mm -hmm. so i think it's quite i think it's a sort of we will acknowledge that there was a previous game yeah because like well or we it... could have some screenshots of these were kids involved <laughs> in the last game with mm -hmm. only that actual need to talk about the results or like maybe like the way that this ARG plays it because Twitter exists in the universe of the Somnium files. Um, it is, it is a minor plot point in the first game uh, where it is one of the characters motivations is keeping the secret that he's got like six different Twitter accounts and he's using several of them to, to stock <laughs> uh, a set, the character who the first ARG revolved around. Um, so like my thinking is that the events of the like the way that this plays out might like carry into the game where like maybe the the way that like the real life audience uh reacted or or like were theorized to react or something like that might play a plot point so you know it's like a weird like fictionalization of all of us that participated in the game that would be neat but like it, when you have the game's lead writer in on this promotional event, yeah, you would really hope that they uh, that they tie it in in the actual game somehow, because that is unfortunately something that is kind of lacking in in a lot of uh, other games that have used this for uh, per, like the style of of event for promotion is they they like outsource it to a team that doesn't have like the ability to to. Uh, either put content into the game or tie 
uh stuff in the game back to the thing that they're making um right and even um the original arg whilst a bit divisive at points but people largely did enjoy it it did um and whilst it didn't have actual um whilst in, in a sense that arg went nowhere and it was really just a sporadic promotional material but delivered by an in-universe character if you had watched the arg one point in the game would mean more mm -hmm. it would it would mean there would also therefore mean much less if you hadn't so there's a sort of mm -hmm. as opposed to i feel like this is more of a mixed media prologue to nirvana initiative uh yeah. it's a little it's a little goofy because nirvana yeah, nirvana initiative takes place in the future uh <laughs> but <laughs> so so the timelines are a little skewed unless the fact that this is taking place in 2022 is going to be a plot point in as nirvana initiative is an interesting one right um off the bat, I mean, I need to ask um, if Nathan, have you played the original I? I haven't beaten it yet, but I have played the original I um, up until a certain point, and I, I've made some decisions. So I at least know the the gist of the of the plot, but well, I don't know the ending. <laughs> the okay, then then how we how do we put this? <laughs> how do well, we put this thing? I'm not sure what For... you're trying to put. Nirvana Initiative is in as a direct sequel to the original I yeah. is impossible. Yes. Okay. So we already do know from the beginning that um the sex we do know right now mm -hmm. as it stands that the sections of the Nirvana Initiative where you play as Mizuki are six years in the future. However, no. Yeah, the parts where you play as Mizuki are six years in the future. However, the parts where you play as Ryuki are either the same year as the original I, or just afterwards, or at the same time. We don't quite know. Mizuki is, a, Mizuki is six years after the original I, but Ryuki is six years before Mizuki. So this could either mean that the game is a pseudo-sequel, it could be Ryuki's plot could be interrupting the events of the original I to begin with. It's something that's very uh, strange. It's, I mean, it's all very twisty turny uchikoshi like you know if you played 999 you already know that you're in for uh time weirdness not to mention the half more than half a dozen references to 999 specifically within hidden bats mm -hmm. we've got the on, just on the hidden bats website itself we have uh the nine tv screens ha 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 um mm -hmm. The, the, the TV screens are next to red and blue, being very thematic colors that have a, they carry a very specific meaning in 999, especially when you couple this with watching multiple TV screens at once. That was a very particular analogy the game uses. We're going to try not to spoil uh, 999. I know that there's, there's probably not a lot of people uh, that are listening to this that have not played it, but... Uh... You should! <laughs> You should, and at this point, if you can't access the DS version, uh, go pick up the Nonary Games bundle on... Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's on everything now. It's on everything sure it's now. On everything. Yeah. It's on Xbox now. Um, but, yeah. Go. Good, good shit. Go do that. Um, but... It's kind of already established that this is going to be just all weirdness all the time this entire game because all of the promotion has carried you know the the very goofy tone that the lighter moments of uh somnium files has especially that reveal trailer 
uh <laughs> leaning really hard into the the super agent uh music key <laughs> um, Mizuki, my beloved yes um and I mean, the original game is is already kind of a cult classic now that's uh, well known in its own right before any of this even happened. And a lot of people didn't think that a sequel was going to happen because it sold like shit, like all of his games do. Um, so the fact that they are going in this hard, I am hoping that this is a swing that is going to pay off and is going to get a lot of people talking. Like there's no, there's not a ton of people participating in the game beyond the core fan base, but there are lots of people talking about it and we're trying to cover it uh, on the Noisy Pixel website. We'll probably put together some sort of like summary once the whole thing is over uh, for a here's what you missed in the Hidden Bats game uh, before you play Nirvana Initiative. Um, mm -hmm. I did a little thing like that for the original eye, but also no one really cared at that point. So, but. <laughs> Hopefully, people um, will for the second. My final expectation for this is that I we're get, we're not going to get any answers bef by the time <laughs> that this is over. I expect not nothing. at all. I expect no, rampant can... speculation. I expect no answers. We'll, 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 hopefully, we'll find answers for just some of these characters who probably won't show up in the actual game itself. Mm -hmm. No, I suspect that they'll be mentioned. Um, and I, but I, I have a feeling that this is going to play too big of a role in the plot of Nirvana initiative for it to be wrapped up at all before the game comes out. I think that, I think that if there are answers to be had here, I think that they're going to be kept you close to the chest. In the game. <laughs> I mean, it's a promotional, it's a promotional tool. It's going to be a read the manga ending, read the visual novel ending. <laughs> oh God, what is this? The Kagura project? <laughs> Um, do either of you have any have any uh, final expectations for how this is going to play out? Um, uh, not <laughs> Nathan. No, you, you can go ahead. You have much more to say about this than I do. <laughs> uh, right after um after the absolute curveball of Aine and Binato going from um beloved scrunkers to uh murderers. Yeah, they're, they're still they're skill, they're still precious meow meows, but also like you know mildly concerning, problematic individuals. Um, every that reveal was already a total uh, swing. So the question is, what they'll do for these uh, the following two? Because they can't we, all be murderers. They can't all be murderers, but what they have just dropped is um <laughs> the, this the second pair out of what are going to be a likely three different pairs. The second pair of childhood friends. <sighs> they can't they can't all be murderers unless it's important that they're all murderers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's unless it's important. Which would be and... very 999, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean these kids are being abducted. Probably. So maybe. Maybe. They're being abducted and they're I having mean, giant they're watches put on their wrists with big old numbers <laughs> on them. I mean, Aine is one, Binato is two. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got so far. I mean, I mean, his name uh, does include. It, it starts with B I N A for for binary. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's why he, he, he's two. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, the second half of today's episode is going to have nothing to do with this and is going to be yet another revisiting, probably the last one before uh, the, the, the big transition actually happens. We are going to be talking about the recently revealed list of, a oh, partial, I believe, list of games for PlayStation Plus's uh, revamp happening over the course of the next month and discussing what we can take from it. So we will see you guys right after the break. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. In the first half of this week's episode, we kind of took a dive into Kotari Uch uh, Kotaro Uchikoshi's uh, nightmare realm of uh, crazy axe murderers and what it's all meaning for the sequel to I, the Somnium Files. And in the second half, we are taking what I believe is now our third look 
at what was once known as Project Spartacus and is now known as simply PlayStation Plus. Because we already had a brand and God damn it, we're going to use it. So yeah. the most recent news on this is they uh, Sony has released a preliminary list of games that will be included at launch. Uh, a lot of people seem to be confused on this point. This is not the full list. Uh, they advertise several hundred more uh, than what we've got on this list. We just don't know what they are yet. <laughs> but what is on this list, some of it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, because a lot of first-party games that have been held off of PlayStation Plus, and some of which have been held off of really any kind of like solid discount, are appearing on uh, the PSX, the PlayStation Plus Extra tier. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to leave out games that are already on uh, PlayStation now. So stuff like uh, Bloodborne, Concrete Genie, Gravity Rush, Days Gone, all of that we already we already assumed was going to be brought over because it's not like Sony's going to lose the license to their own games. Yeah. Um, but uh, the biggest ones uh, are three very early PS5 titles that have until now not seen uh, extremely large discounts, and those are the, the Demon's Souls remake by Blue Point Games, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, the PS5 version, and Returnal, all of which are going to be included for free on this uh, this tier of PlayStation Plus, uh, which is pretty impressive considering Returnal out of out of those has never, to my knowledge, been cheaper than fifty dollars new, even even this far after its launch. Huh. Um, some of them are a little weird. Uh, so I mentioned Miles Morales was included. The original Spider-Man game is also included, but not the PS5 version, only the PS4 version, because we have to keep this confusing. You can still only get Marvel Spider-Man remastered by buying the deluxe launch edition of Miles Morales. Yeah. We don't know why. Um, the other the other weird one uh, that jumps out to me is Everybody's Golf for PS4 because that game is shutting down its online servers soon. Hmm. Huh. So it's weird that it's on this list. <laughs> um, but did you guys get a chance to to take a look at you know this list has been posted everywhere? What, what yeah, anything yeah. jump out at you? I mean, the big game you forgot about, man. The one that we all talk about every day. The one that we know that it was coming up. Because you know what game it is? Among Us. It's Knack, baby! <laughs> <laughs> but not Knack 2. But not Knack 2, it's Knack. Fascinatingly. <laughs> uh yeah, uh, so a, a primary look at, at this list is all like a lot of like the no the the must play PlayStation games. Uh, first of all, uh, interestingly enough, the ones that jumped out to me actually is Patapon and Patapon Two. Uh, Loco Roco and Loco Roco Two are also on there, so it's mm -hmm. it's basically a lot of the uh, Japan Studio games that got ported up to uh, big boy consoles. Yeah, yeah. Um. So we've got we've got a lot of what used to be uh, portable only titles that are that are appearing on this, and that's before we even get to the actual PSP games that we're going to be seeing. Um, so I also already mentioned uh, Gravity Rush and Gravity Rush Two, um, yeah. and then Old yeah, games. Loco Roco and Loco Roco Two, Patapon and Patapon Two. I'm still waiting for a remaster on Patapon Three. I don't know if that's still in the cards, but oh, um, that's going to be iffy. I have played none of these games, and I don't plan to start now. They're they're adorable. Well, first of all, yeah. everyone should play Gravity Rush. First of yeah, all, okay. second of all, actually, okay. Can I can I can I rescind my statement? Actually, immediately because I do. because we'll yeah. bully you until you do oh. it. Yeah. Uh, Gravity Rush are both fantastic games. Uh, Demon Souls, the, that remake is really good of Demon Souls. Is it? Yes, it, it, it's really good. Um, yeah, that was that was. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people still citing to this day that that is like the game, the 
like graphically defining game of this generation so far and it was a launch title mm -hmm. um so that's really cool yeah. um especially since now we've also got elden ring so we can see two different teams take on the the uh soulsborne uh mm -hmm. idea in the in the new generation one of which is is a remake of a previous work and one of which is a completely new direction for for the genre huh. um so all of this is stuff that's going to be included uh on the mid-level tier which is ps plus extra uh the one above this one is where it gets strange um so ps plus premium which uh as we mentioned before if you happened to get uh or stack uh time in ps now before before sony prevented that from happening which by the way they have now um then all of that time will be converted into playstation premium uh which is supposed to include ps1 psp and classic remasters of games as well as the ps3 streaming oh. um some of these okay so what we expected the entire list of ps2 games that were already ported to ps4 with uh trophy support they're all they're all here um yeah. the uh the most recent versions of uh the jack and daxter games are are on here um but there's some uh, that that Sony lists under classic game remasters that have people uh, raising eyebrows uh, because they're also including titles like Bioshock Remastered, uh, the Borderlands Handsome Collection, Kingdoms mm -hmm. of Amalur Re-Reckoning, and the Lego Harry Potter Collection. Ah. Huh. Sure. Which, like, I guess if we're counting the PlayStation 3 as classic... I mean, technically, it is getting into that retro I mean, era, but I—I I mean, if this—if this means we could get more PS3 games, so in the future, we have we have we we have still seen you know the usual rumblings of oh well, Sony might have been working on PS3 uh, compatibility for a while that that's still something that I'm not going to put any stock in until it's officially announced because it's been like, you know, it's like, it's like this whole thing with, with, uh, with these new silent Hill leaks. Uh, I'm not going to believe this until I'm holding it in my hands and potentially not even then. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm going to go out to a store and I'm going to buy Bluebird Team's Silent Hill 2 remake and I'm going to bring it home <laughs> with me and I'm going to still think I'm being punked like 2 hours yeah. into playing it. You you're know? already being you you you're already being punked by the concept of Bluebird Team making a game like Silent Hill 2 good. Everybody's ripping on that. Whatever. We're not talking about that right now. <laughs> but uh, you don't want to talk about the medium? <laughs> So we have, again, we have a very limited list, uh, but the so far announced PS1 and PSP titles are Ape Escape, Hot Shots Golf, IQ, Jumping Flash, Siphon Filter, put a pin in that, Super Stardust Portable, Mr. Driller, Tekken 2, Worms World Party, and Worms Armageddon. Uh, I put a pin in Siphon Filter because we don't know if this is going to be the case otherwise. But Siphon Filter will have trophies. Oh. It will have it will have a platinum. How curious. So that's odd. And we don't know what to make of it. I do this is this has not been something that's been stated to apply to any of the other any of the other titles on this list. Um because like it's still something that I don't think is going to be across the board. Um, unless it's something that's already been, you know, been worked on. Um, and unless Sony has dramatically uh, loosened the and, and expanded the pipeline for adding uh, functionality to these games, because we, we do know that for a while, Sony has mandated trophy support in all, all games from, I believe, the second year of the PlayStation 3 onward. Um, 
but that's not applied to classic games when they have been re-released. Uh, so all of the PS Classic titles that were on the PS3 store, none of those have have trophies or anything. We don't yeah. know if Siphon Filter is going to be a one-off case, but we know that it will have trophies. Um, so right. we'll see what that means, because obviously this introduces the possibility that the other ones could and that developers might be able to opt into doing that. Which yeah, is me. Yeah. But the last thing that I think anybody wants is trophy support at the expense of having these games drip fed the way that Nintendo does. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Which, yeah, though, that wouldn't be great. But yeah, uh, now that you say that, I do notice that they do say on that list that it's developed by Ben Studio, mm -hmm. Siphon Filter. So that's interesting. Uh, I, I think if Sony were to do it better than Nintendo, that we would excuse a jit feed. Like, oh, th this is a, the better version of the game. Like, akin more to, like, Mega Man uh, re-releases, where you had a bunch of extra features like rewind, slow down, speed up, and stuff like that to make it more worthwhile. People would would be more lenient with that strip feed. Mm -hmm. The issue with Nintendo is that it's just like, oh, here's the ROM you've been playing for 20 years. Here it is on your Switch. Here's potentially the worst version of the ROM you've been playing for 20 years if you were playing uh, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it should be like that, huh? <laughs> so... What I want to ask you guys is, looking at this list, do you think that so far this is a promising sign for Sony justifying the extra cost of these over a base PS Plus subscription? I personally think that even just that that first tier, the, the, the extra PS5 games getting included, I think that's worth it. I think that... Uh, that could get a lot more people playing uh, Returnal, which is which is really exciting because mm -hmm. Housemark, you know, put a lot of work into it, and it's not sold fantastically. Um, but I also think that there's stuff that I was kind of expecting to see on there that isn't on there, which is which yes. we'll get into in a minute. But what do you guys think? Um. Oh goodness, Nate, you go first. Yeah. So uh, upon seeing this list, uh, I, I'm going to tentatively say yes. And, and like I said before earlier, is there's a lot of must play games on here. You know, right away, having both Ape Escape and Ape Escape 2 on this list is a big thing because, uh, to my knowledge, there's no easy way to play Ape Escape without the PS3. Um, so this at least gets that back into. Uh, our times, uh, along with the Infamous series. Now, now somebody can play the entire Infamous series, including Festival of Blood. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you will still have to use streaming. Yep. But, I mean, you know, you have access. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Um, and then with it, I, I just want to see, if this list already, I want to see how high, how much further they're going to go. Um, I wish they would have dropped the games that were already in uh, PS Plus, like God of War, which is already in PS Plus. Um, I think thing, and, and curiously enough, you can also play the original Demon Souls, the PS3 version. Yes, um, uh, and I will. I will say real quick, that's kind of been a trend um, on PS Now is games that have already been given away on PS Plus in previous months that you can't claim anymore, a lot of them do eventually drop on uh, PlayStation Now. Um, it, it happens frequently enough that people often complain about it, actually, uh, because it kind of uh, disincentivizes you from, from getting both of them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I believe off of this list... Uh, Days Gone, I believe, has been a PS Plus title. Bloodborne has been a PS Plus title. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Un Until Dawn has been a PS Plus title. Yeah. So a lot of these have in the past been, but 
you know, it's always nice to have, to have this available to people who did not have the service before. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure the thing that jumps out to me is that a bunch of these games are in the PS plus collection, which is supposedly yeah. not going away. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to work, but maybe, yeah. maybe they'll be playable if you have a PS4, but not a PS5 to redeem the PS plus collection on. Maybe, maybe that's that would actually happens. make more sense. Yeah. Um, so Jacob, how about you? What do you think? I, I, I turn see, whilst I do have a PS4, I actually played hardly any of these games because time and it's harder to play things on a console on a, on a, on a, on a raw fancy console. You sit down in front of the television. I don't have that much time, <laughs> but so I look at this and go, this could be neat if I played it more. <laughs> It's kind of like the sort of the Game Pass thing. If you play a bunch of Xbox, the Game Pass is really good to get, you know? Mm -hmm. So otherwise, I'm like, it's like all I know about Returnal is it's a cool roguelike where they accidentally Googled how many flaws are there in Tartarus and took the information from Persona 3 and put it into their game. That's all I know about. That's all I know about Returnal. <laughs> So maybe these games will be worth a play when I have more time and I could theoretically use this system, but I honestly don't know. I mean, it is it is at least nice that like we're not seemingly losing anything that you'd expect to be on here. Like this truly, like a lot of this is, you know, the greatest Sony hits of the PlayStation 4 um, just made available to everyone. And that's really cool. Um yeah. Yeah, I completely missed that uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut on PS5 is also going to be on here. Uh, and that's, that, that came out like six months ago, I want to say. That was, yeah, that was yeah. pretty yeah. recent. Yeah, that was... That was that's... not long ago at all. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut as well. Yeah. Um, oh, I might no, have that switched up. It. I might have those switched up. Um, Ghost of Tsushima... So, uh... And then, uh, notably, there there is more PS4, PS5 games. So, like Ghost of Tsushima and Miles Morales, you will be getting both the PS4 slash PS5. Yes. So, even if you don't have the PS5, you can at least still get those games. Yes, it, it mostly gets fucky when you can't count the games that do have uh, enhanced editions that you just can't get. For whatever reason, again, Spider-Man, we don't know what the hell deal is holding that off from being made available more broadly as opposed to just being attached to uh, the deluxe edition of Miles Morales. But so far, that's how they're keeping it. Hopefully, they fix this in the future. This is actually a longstanding issue that I have with uh, PS Now as it currently exists, which is... There are a ton of games that are only available for PS3 streaming on PS Now, despite the fact that they have native PS4 editions. Uh, mm -hmm. This includes a bunch of Resident Evil games, a bunch of Battlefield games. Uh, it's, it, it's really frustrating that I know that there is a version of this game that I can just download and 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 play but this service only has the one that I have to stream off of its ancient PS3 server blades. That's irritating, but you know, hopefully that's the thing that gets fixed now that we're, we're taking a fresh look at all of this. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, although, you know, some of this is not making me hopeful. Like one of the games that is listed here is the Devil May Cry HD collection for PS3 streaming, even though that has a PS4 native port. Yeah. Ah, um, fun. So we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to ask you guys about this. So... We already know, Sony has said over and over again, we have repeated over and over again and defended their position on it. We are not going to be seeing day and date games land on this service unless they are uh, probably smaller mid-card titles the way that uh, Oddworld Soulstorm and Destruction All-Stars 
uh, launched on PS Plus. So God of War Ragnarok, not going to be on here. Horizon Forbidden West, not going to be on here. Uh, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 16, not going to be on here. Not on day one. Um, so with that in mind, is there anything that you guys can think of looking at this list as it exists now that Sony could do to sweeten the pot without going back on that ideal? Um, it's like i already kind of mentioned one i think that it would be nice if this service just already included the best possible versions of all of the games that are on it yeah i think i think that is something that is uh quite needed especially when one of them is confusingly locked behind a purchase that you won't have to make because the game it's attached to is going to be available to you on this service So you effectively, if you have uh, PS Plus Extra, if you want to play Spider-Man Remastered, be forced to buy seven to pay seventy dollars to get uh, to to purchase a full copy of Miles Morales on PS Five. That sucks. Sorry, yeah. I believe it's six. No, it's seventy. No, it's it's. I think it's seventy. Yeah, uh, for the that PS Five version, um, which you know, because it was kind of. Uh, annoying at least to me I, um, I i'm thinking you know like i like you said the thing uh right away um there it would be key for them to get some really uh games that have never been digital before so since square enix is is wiggling their butt for money for uh more you know crypto <laughs> Uh, why don't we get Birth by Sleep and um... Birth by Sleep I don't see happening because I think that at this point it would be more prudent to just get uh, 1.5 plus 2.5 yeah but the other one would be Crisis Core yeah that's that's obviously I think that's going to be on a lot of people's minds Mm -hmm. and then for other things it is the thing that I scratched my head about was that why don't we get any of the Ratchet and Clank games? That that That's actually one of my big ones is I look at this list and the thing that immediately jumps out to me as being missing is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, mm-hmm. It will be a year oh, old yeah, that by, the a... time, by the time that this service comes out in, in the majority of the world. I don't know why it's not on this list. Um, I understand, I understand Sony not wanting to set a precedent for how long a person can expect to wait before a game is put onto this service. Um, because let's face it, what they're trying to do is protect individual sales of games. And if a consumer knows that they can either pay $70 for a release now or wait six months and it'll be on this service that they're already paying for, I think that 80% of people will just wait, right? Yeah, Uh, yeah. That makes sense. um, So I think that I think that not setting a precedent for how long a game has to be out before it comes on here uh, is probably for the best. But it also does not escape my notice that one of the games that is on this list is uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy which came out after Rift Apart. Oh, yeah. That's also a good game. It's an, it's an yeah. exceptional game. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is also on here. I've heard people care about that. That's, that's, that's neat, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla is on here too. Uh, I'm sure people would like that too. Yeah, you can play it without paying Ubisoft. Hey. The dream. The dream. I haven't played it yet, but I I got it for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacob, how uh, about you? I don't really have anything else to add. I've been thinking, but <laughs> um if I can add one one more thing, like knowing that this is a preliminary list, I think that something that Sony could do to um, 
to really sweeten the pot and not like try and compete with because that's why we've been stressing that this is not a game pass competitor this is this is just a service that sony provides that is similar because they're never going to do day and date releases but i think that it would be really cool of them to do periodically uh releases of remastered titles on this yeah. service uh i already mentioned uh patapon 3 has not been remastered but the first two games have i think that seeing stuff like that just every so often drop on here the day that it comes out i think that would be really cool i think that yeah. you know because we've already seen that happen with uh all of the ps2 to ps4 games getting dropped on ps now um mm -hmm. and all of those have lovely trophy support and controller support uh and I think that doing more of that would be a really nice way to make this service look more compelling to people that can't already look at the list of games that's on there and be like, oh, I want to play that and that and that and that and that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Nate, did you have any closing thoughts here? Yes. Um... I think this list and this service is, is going to be, funnily enough, more exceptional and more great for people who are jumping into PlayStation for the first time or who hasn't had a chance to play these games before. So, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes, which makes sense. Um, so it makes sense for people who are just starting out to, if they're going to be having to play for PS Plus anyways, might as well go the full tier for a couple months, get to play these games, and then, you know, drop down whatever they feel like uh for me i was always going to go to the highest tier um because that's just who i am at this point i have game pass ultimate i have uh nintendo online at the highest tier uh, you're insane uh, uh, and now i'm gonna get play uh, playstation plus the highest tier so i mean didn't you didn't you stack ps now didn't don't i remember that being a thing I, I, I was going to, uh, but I was tight on funds at the mm. time, and then Sony locked it down. Yeah, that they they did not. Well, 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 they well. did not let that happen for very long. Um, <laughs> Jacob, how about you? Uh, uh yeah. Um, can I go to dinner for my last thing? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um. My final thoughts here are looking at this, looking at this list. Um, obviously, we're going to get more of them. Maybe we'll talk about it again if we get a more complete list in the next couple of weeks. But obviously, the service is launching in about three weeks, so we shall see. Um, but looking at what we've got now, it is very clear, and I'm saying that this is a good thing that where game pass is a service that looks at the present i'm excited that this appears to be sony emphasizing the past um because i think that yes looking at this this is like if you are just now buying a playstation 5 uh, or even a ps4 and you've not had this these consoles before like this is going to give you the, the the entire highlight reel yeah from what i can see like everything that you probably need to play is on here or or probably will be in short order given this this list of 120 games out of the 700 or so that are promised to us yep so i am excited uh I will I will 100% be uh be scrolling through that list multiple times uh come June and I am hoping that this works out because I want to see this this service actually grow uh, the way that PS Now basically failed to. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Stray Pixels podcast. We post every Tuesday on your podcast app of choice and on the Noisy Pixel YouTube channel. 
uh is there any uh are there any games in specific that you guys want to see on this service that are not already on the preliminary list uh how mad are you that ratchet and clank is not on here let us know in the comments on youtube is if there's anything that you'd like us to talk about on a future episode you can leave a comment under this video or you can talk how? to us on twitter <laughs> and how much do you like the sound of a blooper team silent hill <laughs> just just to annoy colin uh yeah. You can find you can find me, Colin, at, at the Arcane Ranger. You can find Nate at, at less than Nathan, and you can find Jacob at, at Pyre Loop. That's P Y R E L O O P, or the because site itself at, at, at Noisy Pixel News. The Stray Pixels podcast is brought to you by Noisy Pixel. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to bring you the latest news, reviews, previews, podcasts, and more. Please like, subscribe, follow, and join our Discord to keep up with our future content and talk nerdy with us. We will see you guys next week.